political subversion, psychological manipulation, disinformation campaigns, military manoeuvres, puppet statelets, paid local collaborators and phantom civic organisations. This is just a small list of Russia's subversive operations happening today, not just in Ukraine, but partly in the West as well. A major new report on the Kremlin's hybrid war outlines in detail how Moscow uses once top-secret Soviet-era tactics to exert power and influence through networks of groups which push the interests of Russia, while also exploiting vulnerabilities and weaknesses of Ukrainian power structures and society. But, of course, if you're outside of Ukraine, you might be wondering, why is this important for me? Well, I'll explain the reasons why it is in a minute. The authors, Alexandra and Bob Seeley, went through three tranches of emails and documents apparently belonging to senior Kremlin officials, most importantly Vladislav Surkov, known as the Grey Cardinal, and even Putin's Rasputin. Uh, you might know the political operative has been Putin's personal advisor on relations with Ukraine since 2013. So that's before Russia's invasion of Crimea. The authors argue the correspondence and records hacked by a Ukrainian group called Cyber Hunter in 2016 is in the public interest. Why? Well, because they highlight the lengths the Kremlin will go to to control and undermine uh, democratic countries based on the experiences of Ukraine and Georgia. And of course, it's also an important reminder that Russia commands and controls the war in the Donbass. ABC News, it's not a civil war. There were a few parts which uh, really struck me. Uh, one part, in fact, was about active measures. It's a sort of Soviet form of political military conflict used in warfare. Uh, the authors write Russia uses demoralization, destabilization, crisis points, and in fact, renormalization in its warfare strategies. And that, in fact, is just the foundation. Alexandra and uh, Bob Seeley highlight not just concepts we've heard about uh, before, you know, energy, such as uh, Nord Stream 2. We appreciate the support of Berlin in the question of European energy security, including support in building the Nord Stream gas pipeline. Or, in fact, information warfare. But also Russia's careful study of messaging lines for specific target audiences in Ukraine, who would be encouraged to do uh, Moscow's bidding on their behalf. And that is where something called reflexive control comes in. Now, this involves manipulating an opponent into making decisions leading to their own defeat. For this, the Kremlin conducted painstaking research into the intricacies of Ukrainian daily life to understand the Ukrainian worldview and identify vulnerabilities that could be exploited. Then, using media, front groups, provocateurs and paid rallies, it created a virtual reality designed to compel Ukraine into making decisions serving Russian objectives. The report also delves deeper into the Kremlin's Novorossiya project. Do you remember that? The authors say the leaked emails highlight the Kremlin's efforts to establish regional special statuses well beyond Donetsk and Luhansk. And we're talking about economic zones, for example, in Kharkiv, Odessa and even Dnipro. What was the aim? Well, changing the Ukrainian constitution. That was the aim and the eventual soft federalization of one part of the country. Now, this could have certainly slowed down or even halted Ukraine's EU integration process. Now, the report also outlines key players involved in this project and how Russia is still trying to do this today and even win in Ukraine. Alexandra and Bob Seeley point out uh, to achieve the death of a state, the Kremlin relies on Western media freedoms to do its bidding and enable its agents of influence to work in Ukraine. So really, that's something everyone, not just in Ukraine, but abroad, should be wary of.